if you're from Baltimore, stand up. Jordan Hawkins, baby. is Dude, I love me some Jordan Hawkins. And we know Trey Murphy and Herb Jones and that whole situation is just awesome. Okay, like the Pelicans are a team that has done a phenomenal job draft. And they're 2-0. This team, if Zion, we all know, first off, everyone, DeJounte Murray got hurt. They're running now. Herb Jones in the starting lineup with the CJ McCollum. Daniel Tyson in the starting center. We got Eves Messi coming in. You got Brandon Ingram and Zion. We all know the story of Ryan and Z- uh, Brandon Ingram and Zion, the two headed monsters. Zion looks incredible. Brandon's on a contract year. All right. Herb and Trey both got paid, but you know, Trey and now DeJounte Murray are out. So it's really up to Javante Green, Jose Alvarado and Jordan Hawkins to help out the, you know, and Herb Jones, who's now in the starting lineup, but to help out the starting lineup. And Jordan Hawkins, baby, first off, shout out again, if you're from the Baltimore area, just like me, okay, this year so far, the two games, 18 and a half points, first game he had 13, and then the second game, because they needed him to do more, he had 24. And this year, last year, he also, like, there was times people don't realize that Jordan Hawkins was facilitating, okay, for the pelicans and i want to just let you guys know that jordan hawkins is kind of low-key has shown flashes of being able to like facilitate offense like last year in november when he was a rookie he averaged 14 and a half points four rebounds and two assists in 16 games when he's playing like 30 minutes a night so i'm not sitting here and being like oh he's gonna be like this you know facilitating awesome guard no that's not even what i'm saying I'm gonna. I'm saying he can be a playmaking secondary playmaker right now, and I think he's shown flashes of being able to do it. Basically, Jordan Hawkins, when he came out, was arguably the best shooter in his draft class, and the and the thing is, is he's showing a bit more ball handling and defensive ability than I think we we uh, we evaluated, and I think that's a big thing. Is they're gonna need him to help create offense not just for himself which he's showing the ability of easily being able to create offense for himself like god damn jordan hawkins was meant to score but what we're seeing is he's being able to like be an offensive nucleus for the second unit and i think that's going to be huge especially with the you know they already the the injuries mounted up with Dejounte murray and trey murphy so for me i think the the biggest thing is just making sure that you continue to foster mr Jordan Hawkins because I think he's shown time in and time out again that he can be a very very good scoring you know guard who can create for himself and for others and I really really like that I think it's really fun and it's a it's something that they need to harness because I've said it before his floor is at least being like I know Buddy Heald's arguably one of the greatest shooters of all time and that's like maybe a hard but like dude i really think he could be a better player than buddy healed and this is a team first off he's messy is way better or like more ready than we thought and i've said that this whole time that i wouldn't be surprised if even messy could be the team this year's like Derek lively and for me i'm just amazed at how well and how efficient they've been able to go out and get their their second unit running and humming especially with the fact that DeJounte Murray went down with an injury and I feel like this was a team that was still able to go out and create as if there there wasn't you know their point guard missing and by the way Javante Green what a great pickup what a great fit for them I thought he's a guy that really just runs and up to the down court I know he, he didn't do much to this past game but I just like him I He's, he really fits Javante Green and Jose Alvarado on the same team is a lot of energy, ladies and gentlemen. So I do enjoy that. And the second thing is, like I said, Jordan Hawkins is clearly the sixth man. We knew the six mans were going to be if like Dejounte was healthy, Herb Jones and Trey Murphy. But because Trey Murphy's out now and Dejounte's out, you had to put Herb in the starting lineup because CJ McCollum's playing point guard, and I think it looked great. Also, Zion Williamson being point Zion was awesome. It's also cool to see Brandon Ingram facilitating. So I think there's a lot of things that we saw here that are that that is fun, that is exciting, and it's going to be something to continue to monitor. For me, I think knowing that a team like the Pelicans, who I've said before, is a team that I expect to at least be a play in 
I think they should be a top six seed. I think it's closer to their the sixth seed than the top four seed. But they have the pieces in place, and, and Zion looks really good. I've said it before, Brandon Ingram is looking like the, the most efficient version of, of Brandon Ingram we've seen. So, man, I sit around and I think, how do we take advantage and continue to... I've said it before. I think the biggest question mark will be... I think the bench is good. I said the biggest question mark was either going to be the bench or their depth. Their, their front court depth in terms of their center. So for me, I think right now, there I'm looking at this team and I personally believe that the bench is good enough. And I, I know it's through two games, but right now it's looking like it's good enough, even with the injuries. And especially once they get healthy, it's going to be even better. I think the biggest question once we get to the trade deadline will be, is Daniel Tice and Eves Messi good enough? Or will they be a team that will be looking for a Clint Capella type guy? I really still think like a guy like Clint Capella. The problem is, is I don't think they can go after a Clint Capella. I think they need to go after a Nick Richards for contract reasons. Because money wise, who are you? If you're the, just to segue this as we, we, we near the end of this video. But salary wise. Who are we going to trade? Because I don't think... I think there's a lot of untouchable guys here. And I don't think there's really a contract that you can trade on this team. As I've said, is you're not trading Trey Murphy. You're not trading Jordan Hawkins. You're not trading your Ease Messi or Herb Jones or DeJounte Murray or just CJ McCollum or Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson. So really, the only guys that you have to trade is Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Like, you don't really have the contracts to do a trade. Now, I want to see if they... I don't know if they have a... I know they have Carlo Ma uh, Matikovic, but... I wonder if they have a trade exception, because I, I... I think that's the, the biggest one, is... If they have themselves a trade exception that's going to make a lot of things easier for them especially once they if they do need to get a big but I really think they might be a team that has to look in the free agent market or really hope that these bigs that they have on their roster are going to do it and by the way they have a trade exception of 9.9 .9 million dollars from the Giannis, uh, Jonas Valanciunas trade or a 5.7 from the Kyra Lewis Jr. trade so with that being said that means they have if they attach a guy like Jeremiah Robinson or they can either have about $12 million to trade or which again, they can get Nick Richards. So it does actually work out that if they, they do have a trade exception. And I think if you look at that, I think the bench is good enough. I think the only question we have now is this, the front court going to be good enough. And if it isn't, who are they going to go out and get? I want to hear your guys' thoughts.